we are here at the Edward Francis Moore Teaching Hospital with the military from the Nigerian alongside with the Gambia Armed Forces. They are here to donate some foodstuffs to the hospital. Sit back, relax, watch and enjoy the program. The Ambassador of the Nigerian High Commission to the Gambia, the Chief of Defense Staff of the Gambian Armed Forces, ably represented by Colonel LFK Jame, Chairman of the Board of Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, Chief Medical Director and the management of the management staff of the hospital, the Nigerian Contingent Commander, the Commanding Officer, one battalion Gambian Armed Forces, the Managing Director of First Bank, FBN, the Gambia and Grantee Trust Bank, senior officers here present, men of the Gambian and Nigerian Armed Forces, members of the press, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lieutenant CEO Mafo, the Nigerian Contingent Medical Doctor and also the Master of Ceremony for this great occasion. Good morning and a warm, a warm welcome to you all. Naka Subasi. Sumonda Bedi. I'll start this introduction with this popular quote. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. I'm most delighted to stand before you today. It is my singular honor and privilege to anchor this great and historic August event. Today is a very important day in the annals of the Nigerian contingent activities here in the Gambia. In the spirit of the holy month of Ramadan and in line with the armed forces of Nigeria Civil Military Corporation while deployed in any peace support operation, the contingent commander on behalf of the Nigerian contingent will be presenting some relief materials to this great health institution. It is a tradition in the Nigerian army to impact positively in the lives of civilians in the community in which it operates. Without much ado, please permit me to give you a brief rundown of the program of activities for this occasion. Immediately after this introduction, I will call on the military chaplain and imam to bless this occasion. Next activity will be the opening remarks by the Nigerian Contingent Commander. This will be followed by presentation of relief materials to the hospital management by the Special Guest of Honor. Next activity will be the remark of the Chief Medical Director. After the remarks of the Chief Medical Director, I will humbly and most respectfully call on the Nigerian Contingent Commander to invite the special guest of honor to give her remarks. Subsequently, a representative of the hospital management will be invited to give the vote of thanks. After which, there will be a group photograph of all the dignitaries and invited guests with the Nigerian contingent commander and the officers and men of the Nigerian army. All after, I will humbly request all the dignitaries and the invited guests to accompany the special guest of honor and the contingent commander for a world tour to say hello to the patients. Thereafter, the dignitaries and guests will, be, will, will disperse. The, with the kind permission of the special guest of honor, I would like to call on the, the imam and the chaplain to come and bless this occasion. Let's pray. Sallu ala nabi al karim In the name of Allah, the benefit, the most merciful, all thanks and praise be to Almighty Allah, Master of the Day of Judgment. Guide and protect us to the right path, the path of those who you bestow your mercy on, not the part of those who have gone astray. O oh Allah, we seek your guidance for the sick ones. Give them a quick recovery through their sick bed. For we that are still strong, give us the energy, the ability to serve you. Rabbana zalamna anfusana fa illam takfurlana wa tarhamna lanakunanna minal qasirin. 
اللهم إني أسألك وأتوجه إليك بنبيك نبي الرحمة محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله يا أبا القاسم يا رسول الله يا إمام الرحمة يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واشتشفعنا وتوصلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يبي هاجاتنا يا وجين عند الله اشفه لنا عند الله اللهم إنك أفوه تحب الأفو أفعنا اللهم إنك أفوه تحب الأفو أفعنا اللهم إنك أفوه تحب الأفو أفعنا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين صلوا على النبي الكريم فاتيا Our Lord and our Father, we thank you this hour. We thank you for the opportunity given to us to be alive among the living ones today. We thank you for the privilege to be here today. For I know many have gone and many are in the sick bed. Our Lord and our Father, we thank you on behalf of everyone that has gathered here to witness today's event. It's not by our power, it's not by our mighty, but by your will and by your grace. As we have gathered here, O oh God, we pray in any way we have sinned against you or come short of your glory. Father, have mercy in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Lord and our Father, we pray also for the purpose of us coming to this place. Father, we pray that you shall come to accomplishment in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray, O oh Lord, even for the people that we have come to see. Father, in any way they are finding it difficult in their lives. Because of our coming here today, Father, O oh Lord, they shall find it easy in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Lord and our Father, we pray that you bless everyone that has come here today to witness today. We, are, we pray also, O oh Lord, for you to bring peace in our country, Nigeria, and in Gambia, and also bring rest to those who are lying critical now in this hospital. We pray, O oh Lord, by, your, by the reason of the anointing, and by the power in your name, let your will be done in their lives now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please, can we give a resounding round of applause for that wonderful word of prayer by the Imam and the chaplain? With the kind permission of the special guest of honor, I will most humbly and respectfully invite the Nigerian contingent commander for his opening remarks. A special guest of honor for this auspicious occasion. Um, the Nigerian ambassador to the Gambia, Mr. Abdulkadir Masru, the chairman of the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, and also the chief medical director, the representative of the chief of defense staff, Colonel Jamin, our brothers and sisters here in the Gambia, in person of Mr. Bolaji, the managing director of the Trust Bank, the Gambia, Mrs. Oloma, the managing director of FBN, the Gambia, and our one and only friend, also the friend of the soldiers of the unit. Um, <laughs> Uh, the MD of Skybank, the Gambia. Uh, permit me, the special guest of honor, to stand on the existing protocol already anchored. But without much ado, permit me also to acknowledge the presence of the economic uh, deputy force commander, uh, uh, S.A. Abimbola. Also, I would not uh, be quick not to acknowledge the members of the diplomatic corps and uh, men of the media. I say good morning. Well, this is not supposed to be a speech making ceremony as we have all been told that it is in the spirit of kindness and goodwill and in line with our modus operandi that is extending civil military cooperation activities wherever the Nigerian contingent are deployed whether at home or outside the country Nigeria. 
The Nigerian Armed Forces has so much capacity to assist in times of need. Just like it is enshrined in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that the Nigerian Armed Forces can be called upon or are called upon. Permit me here to also state and make true confession that the relationship between the Gambia and, the, and Nigeria predates history. Most of us seated under this canopies today or witnessing this great occasion, we have one way or the other been beneficiaries of both countries. As such, what is happening today, it is not political, it is not economical, it is not social as well, but it is just called to duty. I want to use this medium to call on the management of the hospital and by extension the head of service, I mean the head of mission of the economic operation and our ambassador here in the Gambia to please let our home country, Nigeria, know that we have no interest here but we have invested so much in the Gambia. It is not the time for us to say that we will not continue with our goodwill. Our goodwill is very much and still appreciated in the Gambia. Not just the hospital or the health sector, other sectors in the Gambia also need the Nigerian assistance. So please, the Nigerian High Commissioner to the Gambia, don't hesitate when they call on you to oblige them of this kind of great assistance. Um, without much ado, I want to use this medium, though I'm not doing someone's work, to thank the chairman of Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, and by extension, the chief medical director, whom I believe has enjoyed his stay while he was in Nigeria, but I hope he didn't come with any uh, madam from Nigeria. <laughs> because he confessed to me that uh, he enjoyed his stay in Nigeria for giving us the opportunity to extend this uh, uh, act of goodwill. We are starting with the medical center because no matter how rich or no matter how poor you are, you won't know that you are blessed until when you are sick. When you are rich and you are sick, you are the poorest. When you are poor, and you are healthy, you are the richest. So we are starting with the medical sector. But I want to assure you, within the time that the Nigeria contingent will be deployed in the Gambia, we as a contingent, we are going to make sure we touch almost every sector of the Gambia one way or the other. In a very quick time, once the permission has been sought and approval has been given, the Nigerian contingent will automatically move to the next important sector, which is the security sector, to also coordinate and organize a manpower capacity building, just to appraise them on the current global security challenges which we are privileged that countries that call themselves developed countries had to come to Nigeria to come and collect the template how we are dealing with the current insurgency. Nowhere is safe now. Everywhere is on its toes. That is what is the in thing. That is what is the latest in the world now. Don't think that you are safe. Even when you are inside your room, be security conscious. Because it's been proven, places that hit her to believe that it is a safe heaven, it has now turned to a uh, uh, place of security concern. So, any moment from now, we are making all the necessary arrangements to see how we will pass the experiences that other countries are going to come and tap from Nigeria 
to our big brother, the Gambia, who will not hesitate. On this note, permit me also to read the little we have brought to the hospital, to the hearing of everyone, and by extension, to also state that no amount is little, but it is the heart that matters. Just like, let me permit me, the head of mission, to crack a small joke that the Nigerian police will say, at all, at all, Naim bad pass. <laughs> so with this, I want to believe that uh, we have cemented or we have rekindled the relationship between the Nigerian health sector and also the Gambian health sector. And please, do not hesitate to call on us, whatever it is, even though we don't have the manpower capacity in terms of doctor, but the little one that we have, I want to believe, is on record. He comes to assist in consultation and also in surgery, if uh, time permits, from 10 to 10. We will still continue with it, and uh, we thank you for giving him the room to also improve and develop himself. With this, I say what we have today for the patients of Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital is 300 cartons of water. Um, there is, you doctors will tell us. I had to argue with my medical doctor. When I told him some things to be brought, he would be telling me no medically, uh, what, no medically recommended, no medically recommended. I said, okay, this is your show. Let me allow you to take the center stage. But if it were to be in the battlefield, me, the commander, would take the center stage. So then the next is granite oil. The granite oil, I learned, it is not too uh, healthy now for consumption. We decided to bring only four rubbers of it. Then rice. We have 30 bags of rice. Dry fish, two cartons of it. Eggs, we have 10 crates. Indomie, 10 cartons. Liquid soap for the washing of their uh, beddings and other uh, necessary uh, clothing. We have uh, five cartons. The sick man also at times needs to be given the reassurance that uh, you are not going to go any moment. You are still alive. So we decided to bring juice. It's not only the healthy that can drink juice, the healthy one, even the sick. At least we have 10 cartons of the juice. So please, when they are drinking it, you should reassure them that more is still available. Let them just be well. Um, we brought detail but in soap, two cartons. We have detergent, that is OMO, 10 bags. I mean, sorry, 10 cartons. We have Irish potato, two bags. We have onions, three bags. We have sugar, five bags. We have milk, powdered milk. We have 10 cartons. We have spaghetti, spaghetti, four cartons. We have chicken. That chicken should be cooked maybe today so that at least they will start brushing their teeth with it. Five cartons. With this, I say I thank you very much for the opportunity. Again, extended to us to extend this one, Sharon Gesture. Well, I request the chairman, sir, and the CMD that judicious use of these resources should be made use of. On behalf of the Nigerian contingent, I, Lieutenant Colonel M. S. Ademu, permit me, through the head of mission, to hand over this document for the head of mission to deliver it to the chairman and the chief medical director of Edward Francis uh, Teaching Hospital, the head of mission, ma'am. For the moment, all protocols observed. On behalf of the economic family here, especially the Nigerian contingent, and in line with our own duty, we are very happy to be here this morning 
to identify with the hospital. And I take this opportunity to load the efforts of our commander here, who has a far sight, he has vast experience, and he advises us now and then. I come from Liberia, where we benefited a lot for this kind of initiative. And I'm glad to be part of a process where the Nigerian contingent is extending such gesture to the speak to the teaching hospital here. So, Mr. Director, on behalf of the Minister and President, Marcel de Sousa, who is the head of the ECOWAS Commission, and of course our own President Lydia to accord an inquest, uh, President Buhari, and all of you who have contributed to this, we are very honored to identify this little bit with the hospital and pray that these necessities that have been provided are utilized in a most prudent way so that the uh, patients themselves can be a part of the process. So these are the attempts that were invested and the list is with the uh, medical director. Uh, we use this time again to say this is ECOMI's own way of identifying with, uh, through their uh, uh, civil uh, 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 military cooperation initiative. So we are very glad for this and we wish all of those in this hospital well, especially during this season of Ramadan. Thank you. The special guest of honor, the ECOWAS representative, Mrs. Gayflo, the representative of the Gambian Chief of Defense Staff, uh, Colonel F. K. Jame, the CEO of GT Bank, Mr. Bolaji Ayodele, the MD of FN Bank, Mrs. Kings Olikagu, my good friend, Lieutenant Dr. Wafo, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I say to you, good morning. It's a very important occasion for me to stand here today. I've given a few speeches in the past, but not in the midst of uh, all these soldiers we've gone surrounding me. So you can imagine, if my voice shakes, please forgive me. <laughs> Our special guest of honor, the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital is the apex hospital of the Republic of the Gambia. So that means this is the place to go when things are tight, when things are difficult all over the country. It is also the center where doctors are trained, where students are trained to become doctors. It is where we have most of the specialist treatment in this country. So you can imagine the importance of this country. And I'm very delighted to tell you that since the economic contingent arrived in this country, Lieutenant Wafo made it a point of duty to call on us, to pay us a courtesy call on behalf of the command, to give us a letter, a special letter, hand-delivered from the commander himself. This shows that they recognize our presence here. It is twofold. The hospital is for everyone. And we certainly know that we do not know the next patient in this hospital. And as we speak, the contingent is hosted in the Gambia here. That means this is the closest center for everyone in this country, including Gambians. In fact, as we speak, whilst they are in the Gambia, they are Gambians. And I'm sure even when they go back, they will have very happy memories of the Gambia, so they will still be Gambians. Now, as I speak here, it's in my official capacity as the Chief Medical Director of this hospital, but also in my personal little capacity, also probably as a Nigerian. You know, when I go to a lot of places, there are a few times they say to me, they start speaking the local Nigerian dialects to me, even in the Gambia here. So there was a time I went somewhere and uh, stood by, uh, waiting for my turn, and someone said, yes, this Nigerian man also wants to come in. So they think I'm a Nigerian. <laughs> now, there is some history to that, probably. Now, 
My father went to university in Nigeria. It's not only me, uh, Commander Adamu. Uh, my father went to the ABU, and uh, I was born a few months after he left. So he was at ABU when my naming ceremony took place here. <laughs> and the same tradition continued. When I got to university going age, I went to Nigeria and I did my medical school in the University of Maiduguri. So I'm a Unimate product. <laughs> it's only now that some of my Hausa is disappearing gradually. But now with your presence here, we'll be speaking Hausa to remind me. <laughs> now, as the commander said, it's not going to be a long speech. The, 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 the soldiers are precise. Uh, and uh, probably the surgeons are more precise because we caught at the right point. So mine is going to be even shorter than the commander. Now you're coming here, it's very, very, very important. Uh, the entire nation owes you a depth of gratitude. A big depth of gratitude because we knew what we went through and the last time I discussed with the commander, he said you had not gone through anything because of what they had seen in the past. So we thank God we didn't have to get there. Now, a true friend is a friend that comes around when you are in need. And we were seriously, seriously in a lot of need. That particular day or few days into the activities here, uh, our people were in the hospital, just like the soldiers. When people are indoors, we have to be out. So we were here. Our people, our doctors, our nurses, our security men, our support staff, we are all on ground here with the patients in this hospital. And I say, I use the opportunity to thank them. Actually, what, what, what probably caused a lot of mayhem here was when the jet fighter flew over our hospital. That, that caused a lot of panic. And, and whoever flew that jet fighter, please tell her not to do so. We learned it was a lady. <laughs> okay. yeah. But that's just a, a joke. But really, we appreciate your presence here. Uh, the fact that you're still reaching out uh, to the most vulnerable in society. Because when people are sick, they become the most vulnerable. You could see the most powerful man who yields a lot of authority, who has a lot of wealth, who has a lot of knowledge. But when the individual gets sick, we really know he has become vulnerable. So thank you for remembering the vulnerable. <laughs> now, our collaboration as a hospital with the Nigerian people did not start today, as the commander mentioned. Uh, in fact, the whole nation, you can imagine, my dad and um, so many people before him went to school in Nigeria. I went to school in Nigeria at almost no charges at all. My tuition fee then uh, was so little that it was not enough to buy me food for a whole week. That's how little it was. It was just a token. So virtually we were educated free of charge in Nigeria. And Nigeria government, thank you. It, it offered that kind of help to a whole lot of people. Your Excellency, the Ambassador, uh, we wish this kind of collaboration continues. It had piped down in the past, but I think we should reactivate it. Uh, the Nigerian doctors had been coming here and their nurses, mainly to this hospital. This hospital benefited a lot from their participation, from their goodwill, and no cost to us in the past. However, now we do not have them. But uh, we, will, we will urge you and we'll make this a request uh, for you to help for them to come back. As we speak now, uh, the hospital is going to undergo an accreditation process. Uh, what that means is that uh, the team from the West African College of Surgeons, that's headed by Professor Tana Yawe, a Nigerian, and who happened to be my lecturer at the university, they are expected here this weekend to come and assess our facilities uh, and to see our readiness and to help in preparing us so that we train doctors here to postgraduate level. That means from the medical school, they become uh, medical officers, 
but we can train them here to become surgeons, to become obstetricians, to become physicians, and so on and so forth. Now, this certainly needs a lot of manpower. We need other specialists to train these people, and we'll soon be knocking at the doors of the Nigerian ambassador uh, to assist in this. And Mr. Ambassador, I hope you will, you will welcome us. At this juncture, I'm not going to say much because the chairman is going to give the vote of thanks. But I wish to tell you, thank you very much for coming. See the Gambia as your own. We see you as part of us. Thank you very much. Can we give a resounding round of applause to my MMA CMD? Thank you very much, thank you very much. Please, with the kind permission of the special guest of honor, please permit me to share a joke we used to uh, laugh over when I was a medical student. There was um, this period that uh, the psychiatric patients were demonstrating that they, they want to go home, they want to go home. They were shouting they want to because it's the norm in psychiatric wards. They don't want to stay in the hospital. They want to go home. So the chief psychiatrist said, he is going to do a simple test to determine who goes home and who stays, that to test their mental status. So he gathered all of them in a classroom and drew a bus on the board and said, those of you that want to go home should enter the bus and go, you are free to go. So all of them rushed to the board and we are struggling to enter the bus. One of them sat back and was looking at them and was just smiling. So the psychiatrist said, it's like this particular one is good to go home. So he said, okay, now I invited him in the process of trying to discharge him. Then I asked him, but what made you not to go to enter the bus and go home? He said, don't mind those fools. The key of the car is in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, I would like to seek the kind permission of the special guest of honor to invite the ambassador, the Nigerian ambassador to the Gambia, His Excellency, sir to give his remarks, sir. Yeah, perhaps I will join my big brother here to begin to shake as I'm surrounded by these uh, strong men. Uh, the chief of uh, ECOWAS mission in the Gambia in the person of Ambassador Vaba Guy Flo. Uh, in my interest, ladies and gentlemen, to know that uh, Ambassador Guy Flo is appointed as the first ECOWAS ambassador in the Gambia overseeing issue pertaining to ECOWAS. Before now, the organization was headed by a mere representative. Now we have a permanent uh, ambassador who is uh, designated to oversee uh, issues pertaining to ECOWAS. You are welcome, Madam. Uh, the chairman of Ed Edward, Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, the chief medical officer, my brother, the uh, economic, uh, the uh, Nigerian contingent commander under the auspices of economic. Uh, let permit me to stand by the existing protocol. Uh, it is gratifying to be made part of this exalted occasion, whereby the Nigerian contingent in the Gambia under the auspices of ECOMI, decided to graciously present a relief material to patients of Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. In fact, this is a very, very laudable uh, gesture. Uh, it it uh, boosts the image of Nigeria in the Gambia. Uh, let me begin by telling you the relationship between Gambia and Nigeria. The relationship predates independence of the Gambia of 1965. We've been having cordial, if not excellent, relationship right from 
time immemorial down the line today. Uh, this is epitomized by our coming into rescuing a country that was about to tear apart. And thank God, God made it possible. Uh, we've been having series of relationships. As the uh, chief medical officer said, Nigerian under the auspices of Technical Aid Corps used to dispatch doctors uh, 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 nurses. It goes as far as bringing in teachers and all kind of professionals into the Gambia under the same uh, agreement. And it might interest the Chief Director, uh, Chief Medical Officer, that just two weeks ago, we, I met with your permanent secretary, uh, who placed before the Director General of TAC, Technical Aid Corps, some requests. But it doesn't stop there. It has to be on, on, on written. You have to write us to enumerate your request. It cannot just be, uh, it can happen by word of mouth. Uh, on this juncture, I urge you to uh, put up your application through the High Commission down the line to Nigeria. Now, coming to the issue proper, the, uh, the, the, extend, the extension of uh, relief material. In fact, we, I feel challenged because it, it, it's like we are supposed to do what the contingent has done although it goes a long way lifting the image of Nigeria. It's, that's why we are all here. We are here to see, to, to cement the relationship between Nigeria and the Gambia that has been existing before now. Uh, I didn't want to bother you with details of what transpired during the mayhem. Uh, we, I personal was, personally was involved rigorously in the, in the making, in the mediation between the disputing factors. Uh, thank God we ended up uh, achieving results. Uh, we want this result to continue to flourish in, in, in a manner that Nigeria and Gambia will remain friends. Uh, it might also interest you to know that Nigerians are married to Gambians, and vice versa. Uh, I'm also glad to learn that the chief medical uh, officer is my alumno. I graduated from University of Maiduguri. It, it might be. So that a kind of will bring us together and forge ahead teamingly. Uh, on this note, ladies and gentlemen, uh, of course, as the commander uh, said earlier, this uh, relief materials is just a symbol. It's not, the, it's, it's not material per se. It's just a symbol of relationship, a symbol of friendship, a, 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 a symbol of concern. It's something that will indicate to you that Nigerians have Gambians at heart. Needless to bother you about the laudable gesture they, they, they performed in the country, which, of course, we were all uh, party to. Uh, you see, one interesting thing I would like to educate, ladies and gentlemen, here is that wherever we are diplomats, wherever we fail, soldiers come in. Wherever diplomacy fails, war erupts. That's the, that's the, uh, the, the, the uh, I don't know, I'm short of words. <laughs> so, on this note, needless to bother you with much talks. Uh, uh, this gesture exhibited by Nigeria is a gesture that definitely has to be uh, encouraged by the mission. Any other organization from Nigeria can do the same, and we will still support it. As I said, I feel 
uh, indicted for not taking the lead of this gesture. Perhaps I would have been the one to come personally and do that. On this note, I thank the contingent to act aptly on behalf of Nigeria, and I thank you for accepting the talking offered to you. Thank you very much. On that note, I, will, I would like to most uh, respectfully invite my the Nigeria contingent commander to, to come and invite the special guest of honor for our remarks. The commander, sir. Thank you again, members of the uh, armed forces at various levels. We don't have a protocol list here, so I'm just jumping and saying that. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, I sat here and listened and I observed and I just wish to add to what has been said by those who came before me. First, on a personal note, I would like the doctor to know that I have my sons here in the medical school. When they decided to come to the hospital, they started in Gambia in 2004. They stayed here for three years, but they had to leave, and they eventually went to Morocco. So to just sit and listen that this is the place I, of, I right now feel an affinity because my sons are now medical doctors. But Gambia played a role in that, and this hospital played a role in that. And so I'm very glad to see that you are continuing the work. And I join you in extending the appeal to the Nigerian big brothers, I normally call them, for the specialists or the assistants that will have specialists come out of here because that was the reason why my children did not complete here. So that other children growing up, the population is growing. And there's a lot of opportunities that will come for young Gambians here. And we didn't have to depend on others out of here. I would like to acknowledge the presence of our corporate partners. I participated in an exercise with them at the site of the uh, contingent, the Nigerian contingent. And these noble people, these banks, were able to help and to an appeal to restore some dignity to the economic forces out there. And everywhere I see them, I smile because I love people who help. So thank you very much. You can see that your efforts are going a long way in strengthening the economic forces out there to do more. And this morning, we have this gesture of these uh, items that have been presented to the hospital here. Back again, I come from a medical family. My father was a medical practitioner. So I grew up in a hospital. I can diagnose your case before you say what. <laughs> yeah, the black metal, I know it. So I know what it is like in here, and I know what any gesture could mean for a family where something better can be given to their family when their arms or when their own hands cannot afford to. So we want to say a big thank you to the Nigeria contingent for the far-sightedness in doing this. We from Liberia benefited from them. And I just want to just say how proud we are, especially on behalf of President Marcel de Sousa, who is the head of the ECOWAS Commission. As you are aware, during the Just End the Summit, the mandate of the uh, ECOMIC has been extended by one year. So the, the soldiers are going to be present here and engaging for one year. But I want to use this time to make a special appeal to all Gambians. One year is not a long time. There are serious issues that need to be dealt with and that need the cooperation of every Gambian at the community level, at the middle level, at the professional level, and wherever we find ourselves. When we go to the mosque as we are praying and closing this Ramadan, I want to appeal to you to admonish our citizens to embrace this peace that we have. God is jealously, like uh, somebody here said, the doctor said, the Nigerian commander told him that they had not seen anything. You have not seen anything till you see where some of us came from. And I remember in Liberia, in 1989, when the rebels were coming, we were there. Hey, Chucky is coming. Chucky is coming. BBC comes on, everybody will glue to the radio. 
They say all oh, the rebels are treating people right, they don't steal, they don't do this, they don't do that. And at the end of the day, before we reach the, the, the end, the uh, American ambassador in Liberia got on the radio and advised the Liberians and said, you don't know what you are praying for. Pray for the rebels not to reach your capital city. Because if they reach your capital city, your country will go by a hundred years. And I can tell you, I think we went by over a hundred years. And so, when little things happen in communities here, instead of amplifying it, let us become peace builders. Let's go in, intervene, and see what we can do to strengthen the arms of these soldiers here. They cannot do anything without you. And this just shows how important you are. So it's my own appeal to also to those in the hospital to get well, as the commander said, bring the juices, get out there, and every one of us can be peace activists in our community. There's so much we need to do together. And right now, guess what? It's not about the Gambians anymore. It's not about Gambia. The world is looking at Gambia to be a success story. And so they say to whom much is given, much is expected. The responsibility everybody is focusing on, you don't take it for granted. They should encourage you. I know we are criticizing here and there, but things happening negatively. But if you just look at the little out of truth or clarity in the something positive, and you decided to build on that, I guess we'll be able to have a lot of big things happening here instead of just looking at the negative side. So I want to use this opportunity as the representative of the ECOWAS Commission here to reach out to you to join us in our efforts in ensuring that peace reigns in the Gambia. And that every Gambian is given an opportunity to live a dignified life. And so, again, my contingent, I say thank you for making me proud of you, for making Equimic proud of you, and for all you continue to do. And to the men who came earlier and said because they saw the soldiers with the guns, they are shaking. I want to tell you, as you were. When they are around, that's the time you should relax because they will take care of you. So you don't have to be afraid. Let me say that for the soldiers. So thank you ever so much for everything. And uh, to all of you who don't feel slighted in any way by protocols, we say thank you for, welcome, for accepting our invitation to be here. And this is just the initiative. We have the one with the Ghanaian condition where they, they, they are rendering medical services. And this is how we know we can keep the peace. So whatever we can do, please see them as your friends. They are not your enemies. Regardless of what might happen wrong, even the teeth and tongue can make fuss. So I want to use the time to just re-echo the commitment of ECOWAS to ensuring that peace reigns here and that all of us together can help to make a, 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 a great West African sub-region in Africa a great one at large. Thank you very much. Now, at this juncture, invite the chairman of board, Edward Francis Moore Teaching Hospital, to give the vote of thanks. Chairman, sir. The distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols respectfully observed. It is my singular honor and privilege to say a few words and uh, round it up with a vote of thanks. Uh, let me start with a piece of medical history. Sorry, uh, military history, not medical. Uh, it is no secret that uh, the Romans conquered England and ruled it for 500 years. And that mission was led by a famous Roman emperor, Claudius Caesar. Uh, and when he went back to Rome and was questioned how the mission went, he answered in three simple words. He said, Veni, Vidi, Vici. I came, I saw, and I conquered. Well, in the like manner, Echo was uh, sent a comic here when we needed them the most. Uh, needless to say, uh, they averted a situation 
that would have been disastrous for the Gambian people, for West Africa, and for the world at large. Uh, but we are extremely happy to have noted that they accomplished their mission without a single shot being, being fired. And as far as I know, that is hitherto unequaled in military history throughout the world. So our special gratitude to the entire economic mission, uh, particularly the uh, Nigerian contingent that is here today to engage in an order, wonderful gesture. Uh, they have not only come to save us from a situation that would have been disastrous, but they have also brought food items and drinks to our patients here at Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. So I'm sure when their mission ends and they go back to Nigeria, what they can safely say similar to what Claudius Caesar told the Romans. They can say, we came, we saw, and we saved. Um, as already mentioned, the relationship between Nigeria and the Gambia dates back since uh, the pre-independence era. Uh, needless to say, there are many, many Gambians who are trained in Nigerian universities and today occupy high positions in this country and around the world. Uh, I have personal experience of working closely with Nigerian professionals. Uh, when this hospital was being transformed uh, from a general hospital to a teaching hospital, around 2004 to 2006. Uh, I came in as chairman of the board then, and I was here until 2009. And uh, I would like to inform you that the first dean of this medical school was a Nigerian, Professor Essen. Uh, at the same time, the then CMD, Dr. Esambedo, was also a Nigerian trained dentist. Uh, her husband, who was the chief consultant uh, at the Department of Surgery, uh, the, the other Dr. Esambedo, was also a Nigerian, trained in both Nigeria and the UK. Uh, so I had to work very closely with these individuals to transform this hospital from general to teaching hospital, which was the first time such transformation was done in the Gambia. Uh, uh, we had our ups and downs and very rough times, uh, <laughs> but on the overall, it went extremely well, and uh, thank God we were able to transform this hospital to a teaching hospital against all odds and with extremely limited resources, so that today we are proud to say that we have our own homegrown doctors. Um, of course, the issue of having Nigerian medical technical assistance has already been mentioned, and we've been enjoying this for a long time. And as already mentioned by the CMD, we do hope that uh, we will resume this kind of cooperation because the hospital now is in dire need of uh, manpower, especially at the medical level, but also at the nursing level. And uh, we hope that you will once again come to our aid so that we can move this hospital upwards to higher heights.
Um, the reason we are here, of course, is to receive this uh, wonderful donation of food items and drinks for our patients. Uh, especially uh, during the month of Ramadan, when giving is advocated for and, and highly encouraged. Uh, especially in these last 10 days, when we Muslims believe that if you give, your reward is multiplied tenfold. So you can imagine what the Almighty has in stock for economic and by extension of echoes. Um, I am sure the patients will enjoy all of this and of course it will be a meaningful contribution towards improving their nutritional status. Um, so on behalf of the patients of the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, the Board of Directors, management and staff, we want to express our sincerest gratitude for this wonderful ge gesture. It is hearty to note that doctors, uh, de sorry, uh, soldiers don't just come and wave arms and fight, but they also can be involved in such exemplary humanitarian gesture. Um, I was just telling the commander that if we Africans learn to come together, giving our human resources, our natural resources, our rich cultures and tradition, uh, we can develop to a level where we'll be, we will be second to no other region in the world because the Almighty has given us a lot of things that are lacking in so, some other or in most uh, developed parts of the world. And I can say that with confidence because I trained for 15 years in Europe, in one of the most developed countries, Sweden, and I know that with all their sophistication and so-called wealth, uh, they, are, they are not the happiest people because some of the ingredients we have in our societies are lacking. So as the ECOWAS representative said, some of these gifts from God we should guard very, very jealously, especially the peace and tranquility that we enjoy together. Um, I also mentioned to the commander that uh, I was deeply involved in the harmonization of codes of conduct and ethics for medical and dental practitioners in the ECOWAS region. As a matter of fact, I chaired the Anglophone Committee uh, and I worked with, uh, closely with my Nigerian colleague, uh, Dr. Ibrahim, who is the uh, registrar of the Nigerian Medical and Dental Council. And we worked tirelessly to bring about this harmonization. Because at the start, it seemed like uh, an impossible task. Because we quickly found out that the ECOWAS community, uh, in particular, the heads of state who spearheaded the intervention in the Gambia, in the person of President Buhari, President Salif Johnson, ex-president John Mahama, uh, President Macky Sall, and let us not also f forget the indefatigable Ibn Chambers, who also played a very, very crucial role in the negotiations and the subsequent interventions. So on behalf of this entire hospital, uh, we want to thank you very, very much for what you have done. And uh, 
We hope that you will come again, again and again in various forms for a continued cooperation. I thank you for your attention. Please, can we give a resound, another resounding round of applause for that well-worded vote of thanks? With the kind permission of the special guest of honor, who will now stand for the Gambian and the Nigerian national anthem, which will directly dovetail into the group photograph. Serving military officers and warrant officers should salute why the national anthem is being rendered. After the count of three, the Nigerian national anthem. One, two, three. Arise, O compatriots, Nigeria's call obey to serve our Father's land with love and strength and faith. I am Baba K. Gayfla. I am the resident representative of the ECOWAS Commission to the Gambia. We are here today to uh, participate in an exercise by the Nigerian contingent of the ECOMIC forces in the Gambia to carry on their civic and military cooperation duty where they are donating uh, items to the, to, the, to the teaching hospital here around, in the spirit of Ramadan for the patients here. And they are just, we just use this time to install every Gambian about the presence of ECOWAS, I mean ECOMIC in here, that ECOMIC is a friend of the Gambian people and uh, they depend on them to ensure that peace is sustained and we all need to work together, cooperate and the soldiers are not just carrying guns, this is a side of them that shows that yes they are friends even to the civilians, they don't have to shoot, they don't have to do things but they intervene. In Liberia you find them building bridges, some of them are dig hand pumps and they do a lot in communities and this is just a continuation they said over there of what their, their mandate is or what they normally do. So we are very proud to particip participate in these efforts. I'm Colonel uh, Laimin F.K. Jame, Director of Policy and Plans at the Defense Headquarters, Gambia Armed Forces. I'm here to represent the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Marcena N. Kinte, to witness the gesture from ECOMIC Nigerian contingent. Um, the, the donations made to the um, Edward Francis Teaching Hospital in terms of full stop. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Mohammed Sani Adamu. I'm the contingent commander of the Nigerian contingent presence here in the Gambia. The Nigerian contingent is part of the ECOMIC uh, troops that uh, were drafted by the ECOWAS to come and uh, ensure peace and maintain the peace here in the Gambia. 
Okay, so why are we here today in this hospital? Okay, as part of our mandate, the Nigerian contingent, we are responsible for keeping the peace, like I earlier mentioned, but in line with our ethics and uh, tradition of the Nigerian Armed Forces, wherever we are deployed, whether at home or abroad, we extend uh, a kind of civil-military cooperation activities to the communities where we are drafted to provide civil-military uh, assistance. So it's in that uh, spirit and uh, in the spirit of uh, brotherliness and uh, the, the spirit of uh, 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 the month of Ramadan that the Nigerian contingent uh, found it uh, worthy to visit Edward Francis Teaching, uh, Small Teaching Hospital to donate some relief materials, which we believe will go in a long way to alleviate the suffering of the patients and to make them have a, at least a sense of belonging to the society. So what will be like your last word to the Gambian nation? My last word to the Gambian nation is let them embrace peace. Without peace, a society can never, uh, uh, can never, uh, can never, can never develop and also can never, uh, its potentials can never be realized. So peace is very important. Other countries are looking for peace. Uh, they've not gotten, they have the peace. All what they need to do is to just sustain the peace and to improve on the existing peace that uh, everyone in the Gambia is enjoying. Okay, thank you very much for having you here. You're welcome, thank you and God bless.